This is where I made myself a god, after all. I'm so proud to say that we've made it this far Aberration's a nightmare that I'm trapped inside And sometimes it feels like I'm buried alive I'm stuck in this pit with no plan I admit climbing fish just don't work in this hole that I'm in And just when I think that I'm losing my mind I'm pulled from this hole from the love from you guys From humble beginnings to glory ascends There's no backing out cause we're in it to win The allegiance of subs that are all backing me And this hole is the patrons for the world to see The people have spoken and all that they want And completing the arts is my only response With two of the maps out of the way so far Aberration is barely a blip on the radar This is where I made myself a god Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and we continue with my challenge to complete Ark Survival Evolved and all of its DLC. And today we're going to be taming the Kakanos, which is perhaps not essential to complete in Ark, but it's definitely going to help us along the way. Between episodes I have been a little bit busy, I've done some Rock Drake breeding, which of course now with this new update has uh, definitely made getting rock drakes pretty easy and their eggs and I haven't made any mutations but Bryski version 2 is good enough to float around on the surface and go gathering loot and uh, that's something that I want to talk about actually all of the loot gathering because I've had some issues with it now of course along with the rock drake the snails are now breedable as well so if you leave these guys on wander you're going to end up with a mess around your greenhouse and you do have to spay the creatures but I've needed this cementing paste and we finally managed to get a chemistry bench down and an industrial forge. Uh, when it comes to making sweet veggie cakes the sap is easy to collect it's just in them trees just opposite our base here so veggie cakes are not really a problem I'm probably gonna get a couple more honeybees but you don't even need a, a platform to access them trees just in front of us there them tall trees you just need your climbing picks and the actual sap taps themselves and yeah you've got enough sap for days so I just wanted to go over the loot settings and just around the back here was a tech stego that I want to tame so I'm just gonna go and grab that while we go over yeah some of the problems I've had and one of the things I'm going to have to do is redo our single player settings because, and what level was this? It was like a 17 something. It's nearly a max level tech creature. Yeah, 174. So basically, I've managed to get by on the island map and scorched earth by having a creature that we can craft in their saddle, like the RG or the Fawny Dragon. And many of the blueprints that we come across, the amount of resources required to craft them just simply won't work unless we use one of the birds and we're using the, uh, no mods to complete this so we're trying to do it um, without mods it's really difficult by the way without a stack mod uh, or the spyglass mod but yeah so all of the loot that I've been gathering up on the surface and I've managed to find some good stuff but uh, I can't use it because I've got no way of crafting it so my first thought was 
how about I go back to the island and just bring Twitch through to the aberration map and then I can craft in its saddle but then the thing is there's no guarantee that if I bring that RG across I can even deploy it on the aberration map because there's no flyers on this map so I could do it perhaps with a fawny dragon but it would feel a bit like cheating my next option is to make the tech fabricator now that requires a hundred element and then one element per power on to be able to craft something now well the one element per turn on is not a problem because you can get the element ore on the surface but the problem is the charge batteries each piece of element ore costs eight charge batteries and there's only so many charge stations each only having three charges and a 20 minute cooldown literally to craft 101 pieces of element which is what we would need uh, would take me probably three or four weeks to do so I can't do it so what I've done is I've turned loot settings down to default we're putting them on at times one and apparently you shouldn't have this problem in vanilla settings now that they've upped the amount of leather that you can gather you shouldn't come across a recipe that you can't craft in the actual smithy which is defaulted at 75 slots so we've done that and I've turned crafting skill up to times three so when it comes to crafting any of the saddles even if we get a really poor saddle maybe a ramshackle one perhaps turning it up to times three might give us a little bit more of an edge so yeah it's been frustrating uh, to say the least and I've put it down to level one and we'll just have to go back up but yeah we'll just take it out on this uh, bulb dog here and um, the assault rifle by the way is the worst weapon in the game by a long shot it really is pretty poor uh, so yeah loot has been a problem so I've just had to adjust the loot settings and uh, hopefully when I'm up there gathering next when we've got 90% evening and 10% day um, the next run of loot we get we can actually craft and that's the only way I can think around getting around what we're doing and it looks like I'm gonna have to put a new update out for single player settings in 2022 I mean I only stumbled across this pro problem playing single player when we got to aberration eventually and um, yeah so I'll have to talk about it and do a new guide for all of you guys on Xbox and PlayStation who want to be doing this but it's a simple tweak I think and uh, yeah we're, we're all good now hopefully we're all good okay so we're not gonna name this one but hopefully I can grab a few more and you never know we might get some good stats let's just check them out and 500% uh, melee damage that seems a bit suspect to me I've never had uh, a tech stego with that much melee damage on it I'm gonna have to check uh, I'm gonna have to check the settings just to see if anything's been changed because either we've got really really lucky there or something's been changed when I've been messing about um, for the time being I'm just gonna stick it away and double check all of that stuff it would help if I actually had the awesome spyglass mod because then I'd be able to see how many melee damage points got assigned into it but uh, yeah that just seems really really high to me I'm gonna double check that one guys just to check nothing's going on nothing's fishy is going on but either we got really lucky or something's I don't know <laughs> but um, we're going to go and grab ourselves a Kakanos and that's going to make a big difference around the base when it comes to gathering metal and I was thinking about a few things that we could do with this episode today of course I've got the Baryonyx I'm a girl and we're ready to go into the underwater labyrinth cave and I'm pretty confident in Bryski's ability to enter the artifact of the shadow caves which I'm probably going to do on the rock drake and I'm probably going to tame a megalosaurus in that cave because to be quite honest with you the odds of finding a max level megalosaur out in the open map are you know thousands to one really I've seen some good level creatures on aberration but I've not seen a decent megalosaurus level so I think it's going to be a case of camping out the artifact of the shadow cave building a taming pen in there and just um, trying to go for more higher levels in the cave but um, 
When it comes to hunting the Kakanos, well, to be honest with you, there's been plenty of good level Kakanos on this river here. So, in order to courage decent spawns, you need to kill everything. So, when it comes to spinos, that includes the fish as well. The amount of fish on a map will affect the spawns of the spino and everything. The otter, all of it. So, if you're looking for specific creatures, my honest advice is kill everything that you see. Um, and go out of render distance. So, I'm just going to go up and down this river killing until we find some good levels and living at the base we are here I have actually seen quite a good levels just from the base area itself it's another good reason to set up here as you can just sort of look across the river look up and down and see what levels are around you without having any trouble so this one's a level 55 but what I've done is I've just adjusted that taming pen just up in front of us and when I find something half decent we'll drag it over there. Okay, so I don't think that took us too long to find a half decent one. That's a 135 and I'm just going to lead it over to our trap. So far this trap's been pretty useful. I've used it to tame a few things and we're now going to use it to tame the Kakanos. Why not? We'll save resources and I think more than anything, it's going to illustrate a point that perhaps some of the traps that people put up are a little overly complicated. And um, we've got a bit of a jack of all traps at the back here. So what I've done is just get rid of this raptor here. Um, is I've just swapped the front doors around for double door frames. Of course, the crab can't um, damage stone. So. My theory is it will just drop in here just fine. And ooh, I've actually trapped my rock drake in here. Okay. So I'll just have to pod that up on the top here. But yeah, it's for places to set up a base location, I highly recommend where we're sat. As you can see there, we've got loot so we can craft all of the cryopods we need. That one spawns back quite close to base and it's just handy, really. I'll just pod our drake up. And uh, yeah, as you can see, all I've done is just swap doors round for double doors, which just gives us a little bit more space to aim the baluster. And I say that and I'm not even hitting it right now. I could have done with placing this just a little bit further back but you see there we've got a direct hit on the back of its shell that's where you want to try and aim but yeah, I think I could have done with just shoving this baluster just a little bit further back so we could reach the hole of the trap um, but there we go as you can see we're just hitting it and the crab's not trying to jump out, as you can see. So, yeah, I think a lot of the traps that you see people design, I think they're just overcomplicated things. Really, you just need something tall enough and you want to make sure your baluster's high enough that it's actually just shooting down on the back of its shell, like so. You want to be careful and it is advisable to have a magnifying glass while you're doing this because more often than not you're going to kill it and um, for some reason it's not trying to attack me or eat anything I don't know what's going on with it um, well it's not interested in eating that dead thing and I would say this is another tip I've got when taming the Kakanos is even if you end up sacrificing yourself to it and you die and you just spawn back using a sleeping bag right back to where you was before you're gonna feed it and bring up its health pull right back to the top again but I'm just dragging some corpses over here and I don't know it seems to have glitched out I might have done something when we had our rock drake above it that's just caused it to get brain worms I don't know but we'll just 
carefully continue to hit this one. If it doesn't work, we'll grab another one. But in principle, you can see what I'm getting at. And uh, yeah, why race the resources when it comes to building a totally different trap? Especially when there's so many good Spinos around here and Kakanos. It's just what a great place to actually set up the trap. getting some direct hits on it now. Starting to get pretty bloody. This is also why you really only want to grab a high level Kakanos. I mean, if you're taming something that's below level 100, you're probably going to squash it before it knocks out. Unless, of course, it actually decides to eat the corpses you're dragging over to it. But yeah, it doesn't want to even eat me. Um, I don't know, it can take a few more hits though. I'll keep going. Um, I need to make some more ammunition. Now you just craft the ammunition in the baluster itself and as long as you've got metal ingots in there, you're fine. So I thought I'd made up enough ammunition to do this, but make sure at the very least you've got plenty of metal ingots. And... I guess if you haven't got enough, then you can just craft up some more. There's plenty of stone around the trap. But yeah, let's keep going with this. Just do a little bit more ammo. Just give it a little breather. But I don't know why it's not harvesting the corpses. It was halfway down on its health, and it's kind of just running permanently now. It's not an exact science, this. But yeah, I've seen many different methods for taming the Kakanos. I mean, I think the only thing you need to be aware of is that this needs to be higher than the trap that it's in. And, um... That's that, really. Okay. Should give us enough ammo. Hopefully. Just try and get in the back of its shell if we can. There we go, it's one. Yeah, I think... Just putting this back just a little bit further would have been a much better idea. Even taking off them top doors might have actually helped I did actually build the doors up at the front just a little bit more, just in case it did jump, but... Okay. Uh, well, it's almost knocked out. Maybe one or two hits away. We might be able to do this. Just give it one more knock. There we go. It's out. So that's pretty much all there is to taming the Kakanis. Got some exceptional kibble, but this preferred kibble is rotten meat. Okay. And remember that as well, if you're out on it as well, stack it up with rotten meat and it will recover its health a lot quicker with rotten meat. But let's just wait for this to tame up. We'll take it out for a spin. And we're back, and I just wanted to show you why the Kakanos is really going to be extremely useful around this base area. And we've gone with the patron naming rights, so family PvE, thank you very much. You're our Kakanos, and I've just grabbed all of our utility dinos. We've done a little bit of leveling on our Kakanos. Again, do take some rotten meat out on it if you want to be able to heal it quickly. We're just going to go out and just gather some resources. So you can see here, you can basically pick up your utility creatures. And as you can see, our Dodic just swings and gathers all of the stone that we're going to need. And it's got an incredible amount of weight on this. And it just makes things a lot easier. Now, in theory, with the update that came along recently, 
the Ankylosaurus should be doing exactly the same thing, but it's not. And I don't know if it's a little bit difficult to do or if I'm not doing something right. I've managed to do it with the Argents flying around, but I don't know if it's something to do with the aberration map that's kind of stopping it at the moment. I mean, at the end of the day, the Raptors still jump and take you off the mounts, so they've probably forgotten to do something when it comes to gathering resources. But as you can see here, just carrying the Dodic around, you can grab plenty of stone and it's one way to gather resources. But when it comes to the metal, well, this is really kind of a game changer. Whether you're solo or you're team based anyway, the Anki is a really slow creature. We don't have the Argents here, so if you've got a second person, they can be on the Anki and swinging while we do this. Let's just come over to the back just to show you how efficient this can be. There's more metal just a little bit further on down the blue path. In fact, the blue zone is just absolutely full of it. So holding down spacebar, of course, you've got this big jump. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. Let's just jump over to the back here. There's a little bit of metal just down at the back. And yeah, I don't know if it's because it's surrounded by rocks or... But in theory, the Anki should be doing this without anybody on it. It should just automatically farm what we've got, but... Unfortunately, I don't know, it's not working. I know it works on the island map because I've done it um, multiple times with the Argent. And uh, yeah, it's really, it, it should just start swinging. But I don't know if there's something going on with Aberration. But anyway, we'll keep going until we get encumbered. I say there's so much of this blue rock and stuff around. Maybe if I take it down a bit lower around some more concentrated metal, I'll be able to do it. But yeah, here's where our Kakanos comes in handy. Now we can keep on going and we can keep on filling that Anki up until effectively it gets black weighted, which means it's got over 300 stacks in it and it's, it's just not only over encumbered, but we can then still move with the crab. Now eventually we will get too heavy with the Anki and we won't be able to move but then we've got the ability to be able to shoot our tame so I'm just going to try and aim for the back wall over there and I'd say just about here I need some practice here and look at that we've basically just flung our Anki <laughs> and sorry Marky don't worry you'll be fine mate you'll be fine all the way across our map and uh, yeah a little bit more precisely and we'll just have to aim for our forge and as you can see you can just toss a completely full ankylosaurus <laughs> so whether it has over encumbered or not and it's absolutely full of metal you could put one in one hand one in the other and just toss them in front of you excuse me just in order to get back to the industrial forge and you know for you know what you'll you'll fill this thing up that's what she said <laughs> again if there's a second player and they're on the anki swinging while you're on the kakanos i mean you've got metal for days and aberration is just such an easy place to gather metal so it's not essential for taming but as you can see it it really is a pretty cool creature I mean not only that as well if you want to tame something you can just pick it up in its claw and then you can go around to the front and just shoot and uh, you've got yourself a utility creature you've got yourself a mobile taming pen if you will because a lot of the small smaller creatures now we can just pick up and just yeah just tame them so that about covers the Kakanos. Definitely a really useful utility dinosaur that you should be grabbing at some point if you're on this map. Even if you're just doing it like I am to complete Ark, it's definitely going to make that journey a lot easier when it comes to gathering metal and even taming stuff. But until next time, 
I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.